Hello, my name is Warren Campbell and I'm a medical physics student in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Now, medical physics covers a wide range of different sorts of science and research, and so I figured for the first ever International Day of Medical Physics, I'd talk a bit about my little corner of the medical physics universe. This is a gel dissimeter. Now, I described it very, very briefly in another video, but I'm going to go in a bit more detail here. Now, radiologically speaking, it is tissue equivalent, and in total, this dissimeter is made up of only five different ingredients. Now, the first two ingredients make up the bulk of the structure of the dissimeter, and that is water and gelatin. It has two main active ingredients, a monomer and a crosslinker, and when exposed to ionizing radiation, those ingredients polymerize, and the more radiation they see, the more polymerization that occurs. The last ingredient is just an oxygen scavenger. Uh, too much free oxygen in the gel renders the dissimeter inert, so we add an oxygen scavenger to maintain its polymerizability. So by calibrating a given recipe, you can find the gel's dose response curve, and there are other recipes. You can alter the recipes. There are even other sorts of 3D dissimeters like radiochromic gels or radiochromic hard plastics and whatnot. But the real trick with these dissimeters is in measuring their response. It's a matter of taking the dissimeter that you've irradiated and then reading out the polymerization that has occurred. Now, people are trying a variety of different ways of doing this. Some are using MRI, some are using X-ray CT, and some are using optical CT. That is what I'm doing. I'm currently working with a prototype optical CT scanner that is analogous to a third generation X-ray CT scanner, except that it uses laser light instead of X-rays. Now, you might ask, why? You're shooting lasers at Jell-O. Why are you doing this? Well, all of this research and all of its related research is meant to advance the field of radiation dissymmetry. We all know that we have to have ways of verifying new radiation therapy modalities, verifying that they are accurate and verifying that they are reliable. And as radiation therapies become more and more complex, it will become more and more difficult to verify new radiation therapy techniques using dosimetry tools that are 2D and under. So that brings us to the 3D dosimeter. These 3D dosimeters can act as little mock patients. Um, there's no back projecting of a portal image. There's no assumptions, no approximations. The dose that it absorbs is the dose that it absorbs, and it absorbs it in full 3D. And the really interesting stuff starts happening when you start moving these decimeters, when you start deforming these decimeters. Uh, you can try testing out your bold new technique that's supposed to account for patient motion and patient deformation, and you can actually see just how successful it really is. Now, I don't know what you would call those decimeters. 3.5D decimeters, 3DD decimeters, 3 triple D, I don't know, I'm not in marketing. But that's it in a nutshell. So, I hope that other folks from around the globe get a chance to talk about their own research on this very first International Day of Medical Physics. Or any day after that, for that matter. Maybe get on Twitter. Have you tried Twitter? You should. It's kind of perfect for medical physics. But anyways, thank you for watching. My name is Warren Campbell, and I hope you have a wonderful day.